So my Fire Stick's been running for a while, lots of things running in the background. And if you look at the top there, we can see we have around about 214 megs of free memory. Now, if I start this application here, we can see we do have quite a few applications running in the background. And as we know, the more things that are running in the background, the less free RAM that you'll have. And as we know, one of the biggest causes of buffering is when your device is running low on memory. Well, as we can see now, guys, I click on one button and we can see with a single click, we've now closed off nine applications and we have nearly 400 megs of free memory. So in this video today, let me show you how you can also install this application onto your Fire Stick, which will not only help out the performance, but really help you optimize your device. So with all of that being said, let's get started. If you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with the latest tech tutorials, the latest Fire Stick, Android and Android TV tips and tricks, then please do subscribe and hit the notification bell. It's a small click from you, but it makes a big difference to me. Thank you. Now, before we start, let me just say that I hope everybody is safe and staying indoors. Now on your 4K Fire Stick or any device that you're going to install this on, make sure you've got these two options set as on, then press the home key. And let's now quickly open up Downloader. And as per normal, inside Downloader, we're going to navigate to my website. And the address for that is http colon forward slash forward slash bit dot ly. Forward slash tduk. That's me and the numbers 2019. Let's type that in and click on go or press the play button on your remote. Let's do that now. Now, when you get to my site, as per normal, I have created a dedicated tutorial for this process. And in that tutorial, you will see a direct link to download the software and the step-by-step -step instructions you need to use to optimize the actual application just so you can get the best from it. So let's click on the hamburger menu Let's click on tutorials. Oh, and if you guys haven't seen this list, let's just open that up. It's definitely worth checking out, especially whilst we're all kind of like, you know, staying indoors. There's lots of great stuff in here and everything does have a direct link. So if I want to try this thing over here, I can just click on that and I'll take me directly to the application or to the service. Okay, but for now, let's go back to the tutorials. And let's now open up the tutorial on how you can actually close off all these applications with one click. And here is the tutorial, let's scroll down. And here are the two bits of software that you need. Now, to be fair, if you just want to close off all the applications running in the background, then you don't necessarily need the mouse toggle. The mouse toggle is only needed if you want to go into the application settings and do some tweaks from there. Uh, but for now, let's click on Task Killer. And let's scroll down and click on the green download button and this will download the task killer directly onto your device. Let's click on that now. Fortunately, it's only about, I think two meg in size, so it should come down very quickly. Okay, let's click on install. And just while we're waiting guys, if you are enjoying this kind of content, if you want to see more tutorials on the Fire Stick or the second generation Fire TV Cube, or the NVIDIA Shield Pro, then please do like this video and also think about subscribing because that really is the best way to help out my channel. Thank you. Okay, let's click on open. And this immediately shows us exactly what's running in the background. Now, as I mentioned at the start of this video, that if you want to close off these applications, I can just press down on the remote and that green button is now highlighted and I can just click on that and that'll close off everything. Now, let me just move my uh, head out the way. Now, one thing of interest here is if you notice where it says available memory and it says there's 374 megs of memory free, when I actually cross-reference that with what developer tools menu shows you, then there is actually a slight disconnect. This one seems to report that there's more memory free than there actually is, but either way, whenever you do close off these applications, you will definitely see an increase of free memory. So before I click on kill selected applications, let me just take you through the settings. So this does need the mouse toggle, so let me bring that up. There it is. Let's go over to the cogwheel. So the first two options, what they mean is that we can add applications to our ignore list, and that means that those applications will never be terminated by this application. So let's say, for example, you're always using the mouse toggle, or let's say, for example, you're always using your VPN. You can add that into your ignore list, which means that will then never be terminated by the task manager. Let's scroll down. 
Now the next options are quite interesting because what they should allow you to do is add in certain applications and as soon as this application detects them, it will automatically close them off. So let's say for example, your screen server keeps going off or let's say there's another application that keeps on starting. Well, if you add that into this list, then that should automatically be stopped. But when I've actually tested this myself, it hasn't worked properly. And what I suspect is it actually requires root for it to work properly. And we don't have root on our Fire Stick or not on my Fire Stick anyway. And let's scroll down and let's click on preferences. Now, interestingly enough, I can actually click on this first option, which will show me the system tasks. So let's do that now. And then you have some other options here to show your services and your foreground tasks, which are enabled. So this is the auto queue thing I was talking about, but even though it's ticked, it doesn't actually work properly. Let's scroll down. Now, if I was doing this on my Android box, then I can enable the widget option, which means on my home screen, I will see a small widget and I can click on that and that will instantly show me all of the background processes and applications. And with one click, I could then terminate them. But unfortunately, that doesn't work on the Fire Stick. Let's scroll down. Now we can see here, it says that if you did have root access, I could enable this and I'll then actually do a hard stop or a force terminate. But again, because you don't have that root access, I can't do that. Okay, let's back out of this. So because we enable the extra option, we can now see all of these uh, system processes, but there's no way we can actually disable them. So even though you've got those checkboxes there, if we scroll down and we can see there's lots of stuff that's running. Let's click on kill selected. And just make a note guys. So at the top, it does say we have available memory 363 meg. Let's now click on kill selected. And within one second, we're up to 533. So it is an impressive application, guys. As I said at the start, there does seem to be a slight disparity in what this application sees in the free memory versus what you see inside the developer tools menu. But either way, this is definitely the fastest way you can quickly terminate all of your background processes and applications with one click, which in turn will then free up your memory. And as we know, the more free memory that you have, the less chance you have of getting buffering. And somebody did actually ask me in a previous video that why is the free memory so important? And again, the way that streaming works is when you are trying to watch a movie or a TV show via a stream, now to make sure your application doesn't actually stop the video, what happens is it actually preloads or it loads some of that video in its memory in advance. So if there is a slight blip in the network or if something slightly just goes off for a second, because you're playing it from that buffer, it shouldn't affect your playback. So now if your video actually catches up to the buffer, so there's nothing else in advance, that's when you'll see that logo, which means that you're now waiting for your application or your device to download more of that video before it can serve that to you. And once again, that's when you'll see that logo. Your device or application will actually cache that video that you're trying to play in its free memory. So even if there are any blips in the traffic or any blips in the network, you won't actually see that. But if your device is lacking in free memory, then that video buffer would obviously be very small. So I always recommend that, you know, before you start your big streaming session or your movie night, then definitely do close off all your background applications. Well, that's all for this video, guys. Many thanks for watching. If you did find it useful, then please do give it a thumbs up. As you guys know, I'm always looking for newer ways on how we can optimize our devices, how we can make our devices run better, whether that's a Fire Stick or a Fire TV Cube or NVIDIA Shield, anything that can make the device run better or we can get more from it. I'm always happy to learn that stuff and of course share that with you. Like my previous video was how you can freeze applications, system applications on the Fire Stick. And as we know, when you freeze an application, that means that that can never start and that means that can never consume any more memory. Whereas with what I showed you today, yes, we have stopped those applications, but in theory, they could start up again. And the other thing I want to mention was an upcoming competition, because as you know, with some of the issues I've had on my channel with the hacking and everything else, I haven't actually had a competition for a couple of months now. So I would like to start a new competition very soon. And, um, and I'm thinking the prize could be an Android box or actually I did receive this tablet recently, which is the Matrix uh, Z110. Now this is a quad core tablet, 64 bit with, with a 10 inch display with 32 gigs of RAM. So especially whilst we are all staying in, I'm sure somebody would benefit from having an extra tablet in the house, maybe for the kids to do their homework or maybe for you to watch Netflix or something else. So do leave me that comment below guys, if you are interested in that competition and what you think the first prize should be. Other than that guys, many thanks for watching. Many thanks for your support. Do let me know if you like this video and I'll hopefully catch up with you guys real soon. Thanks.